Nate was fucked up most of the time he was in New York. But one night, dark brown liquor on your breath, you kind of <laughs> snuck in my bedroom and whispered to me, get up, get up, I got to tell you something. And you basically <laughs> were in a drunken stupor and tell me all about how much you can't wait for AI robots to come alive so you can beat the shit out of them. Welcome to Joy Tactics, the podcast dedicated to all things joyful, joyous, and meeting as many celebrities as humanly possible. Hosted by Eric Rahill, Nate Veroni, and Jack Bensinger. Enjoy. I'm back in the gym, y'all. No one thought I could do it. <laughs> I'm back. Eric's back, irregardlessly of any Three panic attacks. ish in a row. And panic guess attack. who I'm at the gym with? Uh, who? Michael Phelps. Well, it's I yeah. won't say, but it's a good friend of ours. and We love friends. On the internet, but... You have yeah. to wonder who that is, and I'm not gonna, because I don't get parasocial like that. You can't know uh, the intimate details of what I. And a lot of people, a lot of people, I, lot of people, I think Caleb wonder. Pitts. Oh yeah, it is Caleb. They Pitts. wonder about you know who we're <laughs> hanging out with in real life, and we are not hanging out with quote unquote muggles, nobodies. We are hanging out with some of the craziest. Right. Is that a Harry Potter so, word? And we're not posting about it online. Yeah, never, never are we posting mm-hmm. about who we're hanging out with. But just know no, every no. night it's fucking a different type of mega famous mega celebrity mm-hmm. type person and i wish i could hang out with regular ass people like i wish i could go back to that <laughs> shit but it's just that you just can't yeah. relate really to their type of lives no. and I, I don't know do you would you would you agree with this one uh, so sincerely sincerely here's what i do because i hear like listen we're so in this shit now we're meeting people that are climbing the industry uh, fashion Shoe designers. But the only reason they're climbing yeah. faster than us is their social climb. Right. And we don't care about and that. We don't have to climb. We sit at a nice uh, uh, table with, with fresh wine and good uh, projects. And that, we don't have to climb to get to the famous people. Guess what? The famous people come to our right. table and uh, they break bread with us and they like uh, us for that. And we meet more famous people than the social climbers would because some of the way it, we live. So, some people socially, they're social climbers. Right. We're what we call. Social, what's the opposite? What's like a opposite social, of climbers? Social, basically. Social, cr- social. Well, um, uh, no, like social track athletes. Social. We're social. Um, like it's. Well, we're socialites, but we're not. We're not climbing it. Right. We are. We are. Um, we're kind of crab walking. Hold on, let me break this down. Look, uh, wait. Well, hold on a second, because yeah. climbers, what they're doing is they're using the rock instead of respecting it. So what we're doing is we are social worshipers. Mm. We worship and hold sacred the rock yeah. of sociality. Does that make sense? We I hate put, to preach we this put early. Dinners, the amount of time that I say, hey, let's get dinners. Yo, me, me, you, and so-and-so from this whatever show, from this network, we <laughs> shall get dinner soon. Eric, yeah. yeah, that sounds good, Eric. All right, I'm not going to be bullshitting about it. That night, group had, DM, um, hey, yo, I was thinking we all get dinner soon. My treat that I organize it, and we all split the bill. Put the bill. Wait, uh, Eric, you've had you, you've had more dinners than some people have had warm warm meals. <laughs> well, I'm aware of that, and I'm aware of my privilege in ways that would depress most people. <laughs> is that I'm so aware of my privilege that I'm like sometimes yeah. paralyzed by it. Right, and paralysis. I'm, whatever I'm giving. Parasocial like paralysis. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to say this. All right. Hey, yo. If you if you recognize us in public, listen. Pictures that you show your friends, it will impress them what? for a time. If someone recognizes you, Jack, in public or any other celebrity, this I'm just teaching everybody some etiquette. Okay. Listen, you might want to get the picture to show your friends, say, guess who I fucking saw in New York City, all dripped out with their jewelry, all hanging out for them. I saw so-and-so or Eric Rail or wherever, Jack Benzinger, or Nate Verona. Tamagotchi LA. hanging out of their zipper. But uh, and they want the picture for the status. Guess what? Someone asked me for a picture. I, I take my hand politely and I smack their phone gently down away from my face. And I say, I don't do pictures, but I ha- stick out my hand. My name's Eric. What's yours? Oh, my. Shake the hand. Squeeze the hand. Where are you from? Feel their heartbeat in their palm. On What's yours? something horrible that happened to you? Or not. Whatever. I'm trying to well, get to know them quickly. Human. What's something human? You have that a, the problems with addiction. You know. Whether it's drugs or whether it's yeah. art painting and that i find initially they're all bummed to get their not get their picture taken pretty quickly after that they're like yo i just had an amazing conversation with eric rail where before i would have just gotten a picture and gone home all sad as fuck uh because i saw how good he was living and i, I knew you know I'd never what be there. that reminds me of a conversation that i had with tony hawk 
Did I already talk about this on the podcast? You haven't, but I saw Tony Hawk. <laughs> this and, is and legit. Everybody, this is, everybody was, was taking pictures with Tony Hawk, and you know what? I, and you know, I'm a skateboarder. You guys, can I say know. this? Jack, Nolly bef- kickflip, Nolly heel flip. Going. All right. I want to preface this by sometimes we're joking around on the podcast. We say things that sound fake. They're usually real. Sometimes they're not. This is a real yeah. story. I saw Jack talking to Tony Hawk. It's verified. And I might Continue. yeah, because yeah, that's that is crucial because I say a lot of. I sound like this is a right. real story. So I'm talking to Tony Hawk. Everybody's taking pictures. Hey man, what's up? And you know me. I'm a, like I just said it about 18 seconds ago. I'm a skateboarder, not like a flip, not like back heel, fakey tray. I got it all. If you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Down, I mean, Mark Appleyard, Mark Johnson. Need I say more? Uh, Carl's bad. All right. So instead of taking a picture, what I do is I go up to him. I know he's had surgery recently. I said, "How's the surgery going?" And he said, "Oh, it's going good." And I said, "Hopefully they didn't leave anything, do, do put anything weird in your body." And that's where you lost him. Well, what's funny is I was panicking so crazy hard about what to say <laughs> that I said that. And he kind of laughed a little bit, but then he did stop talking to me well, you- probably two or three sentences later. But you know what? C- credit to him because he handled it so well. He handled my dumb ass incredibly well where he what laughed he about it. He said instantly, he said, you know what? As long as they fixed me, they could do, they could mess with me however they yeah. want. <laughs> Jack, do you do you know Hello. what celebrities like more than anything on the planet when you first meet them? Lobster. No, they want they want this more than and and I don't know. You guys might disagree with this, but I think what they really want is if you're meeting them for the very first time, you go up to Tony Hawk and you say, "Hey, I'm a podcaster. I love you have to, I love to have your ass on the podcast." <laughs> I love you having on because time. that's so oh, that's a bold. Good point. Paid, by the way. Paid, paid, paid right. a lot of money more than we're going into debt we so hard by promising audience. <laughs> I love money. debt. Gives me something to work towards. <laughs> Yo, uh, yeah, hold up a hundred dollar bill in front of Tony Hawk. You like this, right? <laughs> Don't you like? I know you got a lot of this. You want a little more? Yeah, for you want to do crazy it. W- vault? Yeah, you want to you want well, to come to my house. A piece of paper into my house, sit on the couch, and talk to me yeah. and Eric and smell our food <laughs> that we cook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Tony Hawk liked me a lot. <laughs> I want to say that Nate... Um, Nate's on Zoom right now. Nate's on Zoom right now. And um, if you're listening to the podcast, yeah, yes, we oh, have yeah. a crazy setup. Can I describe the... Or sorry, go sure, ahead, go ahead. Sure. Well, you put it together, man, so I feel like it's on you. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's on me. So what it is is we thought we'd want to deliver some video content, so I thought, why don't we set up the camera? Well, uh, so we have the camera that is filming us, with Eric and I on either side and then Nate on a giant zoom in the middle. Mm-hmm. And then my work computer has a little graphic up that's kind of cute. <laughs> and so we're recording audio to two different computers. We got a light. You know what I cannot wait for is 10 years <laughs> down the road. No, this ties into this. Listen, listen. listen. <laughs> yeah. This ties into this, I swear. I I'm just not... thought it would be so much more complicated sounding, but it actually sounds not It yeah, sounds yeah. fresh. I mean, Jack, but, and guess what? I was like, oh, how's this going to work? Jack is, I literally, Jack is thinking like this, 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 put the mics like this, uh, the mic on this computer, put, put the camera here, whatever. Uh, you've got a brain that works differently than people in a lot of, in in some good mm-hmm. ways, man. Because it doesn't work in the ways that everybody else does, but in the point in my, in the places where my comprehension skills fail me, my creativity fills in the gaps in a way that I get to the answer that everybody else gets to, but it takes me Jack. Twice I think as long as I five think times you hard. are going to die of being too creative. <laughs> like that's going to be on your like like cause of death creativity somehow. I do feel like I, I'm not kidding. I think I had that thought this week. You kind of do gr- get creative with food. and You're becoming too creative, I think, <laughs> it, to, it, to the point where it's a problem. I do. Um, uh, I got a little too creative with some ground turkey one time, and I'm never going to try and cook that again. That was the most twisted looking. <laughs> that was really scary. I should have known right away with the pinkness that it wasn't done. That's going on the slideshow on Instagram. I have a lot so of... I look um, forward to that. I have pretty much every meal I cooked over the pandemic. I have pictures of. Really? And they're not great. I got my cooking yeah. right, and I don't want to take go off at you and start. No, writing, you but I got my cooking kind of right in the pandemic. Really? It, it is crazy. Remember, uh, me, what's that r- red light blinking for? Um, uh, I was just gonna ask you. Remember when I made that stew? That Allison stew was Roman's, really good. The stew. Well, and if you don't know what that is, y'all, Nate, do you know what the stew is? I know what a stew is, but I don't know what the the stew uh, is. This was a viral sort of recipe, chickpeas all mushed up with 
you know, spinach, uh, coconut milk, curry, spices. And it was I, I, I ate it basically almost every week. I was obsessed with Allison Roman's The Stew. Oh, okay. And then one time I used some raw – basically I think it was rotten kale <laughs> one week Ooh. and I didn't know it. And the stew made me gave me food poisoning, and I never. When did, it when does food? You know how there we've had like kind of a, uh, we've opened up the topic of when food goes bad. Like you, you know how what's that imperfect foods that that drops off? Yes, yes the grocery store. Yes. So there's like or the there's a delivery. service now that will send out food that has like brown spots on it and i feel like the dialogue has been reopened up for when a food goes bad or not so i don't know when something actually really is gonna take you out type of bad because this is this like as you could see i'm gritting my teeth like getting so fucking mad because guess what you mad bro we can eat the food way past the expiration dates of course listen another thing they're putting bugs in our phones to make them die earlier so we buy the new model. We are being crushed by the corporations. They think they can throw us around and take advantage of us. But guess what? Us as a planet is becoming more technologically literate. literate. We are becoming able to resist and fight back. And if these corporations think they can continue to take advantage of us like this, they are wrong. And the guillotine will be coming back sooner than you think. Violence is coming for those who thought they could take advantage of the weak. And guess what? I might not be the leader. I might be dead too quick after the first rebellion. But y'all are going soon. So start shaking in your boots and start or start giving your money back because you can't have your cake and eat it too, bitch. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, I would that legit. Was, yeah. I would go that to war crazy. for you. Would you really? Kind you of are, like that? Eric. If you are, you a, are wow. going to one hundred percent be the first death in the rebellion. Like you're gonna be. <laughs> you will. I think. Oh, Eric, you're gonna be. <laughs> yeah, you think so? You're gonna, the coup's gonna happen, and you're gonna wow. be chilling up in the library, and uh, they're gonna cut your ears off yeah. and drag you into a football stadium, and they're gonna make everybody sit on their knees and watch as they torture you one. But that's gonna spark the movement. But they're gonna garrote me. Say it again. They're going to garrote What is garrote? Me. What's that? It's like a serrated uh, military knife. It's horrible. Oh, garrote. Or maybe garrote is with a, uh, I don't want to go into that. Maybe garrote is just the, the piano well, wire. Don't do that. Well, don't do that. Whoever's right. going to do that but, to you. So, but don't, yeah, do don't do that. Yeah. It's going to be the American military. Or do military and watch what role. happens. Watch the dominoes that begin to fall upon my death. And maybe my death was always needed to kick it off. God dang, man. I want to just like... You, you know, like that. Well, I want to give you like more you like things to... Was, I, what do people need to be inspired on? I felt... I, I don't like know. What, like, give, all right, so give a speech like... Yeah. I don't know if I can get that energy back. Oh, okay. Well, I might need it. to say... <laughs> it might come back naturally, but you that kind of took it out of me. Yeah. I feel like... Let what me try that. Let me try that because I like to think uh, of myself as a leader. What uh, was the what's the topic that you just did it on? I did it on sort of corruption, corporate greed. All right, let me try. <laughs> let me try. <laughs> So back in the day, there used to be nobody who would stop you and block you when you would go down to the water and catch a fish. But these days, it seems like every piece of, of every piece of land in the whole country is now blocked off by some governmental fence. What the fuck? Whose company's behind that? Who's getting? To, it should be the people that get to decide where's what fence is going blocking off what water. All Bitch. Right. Oh, that, that's it. <laughs> there we, we need go. to be like yeah, yeah. Uh, speechwriters. I think like this is this is like I. When I heard Obama had a speechwriter, first off, I was disappointed. Then I was, <laughs> my interest was piqued because, because I thought that him. sounds like the most best job on the uh, planet. Do you know that my I want to get in Obama's writers' room? My agent's um, uh, husband. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We haven't talked about the reps yet, but sure, well, go, go for it. Right get into it. <laughs> we have not. This is the first time on the Careful podcast we're say, talking dude. about rep representation. Um, Nate, yes, I do have an agent. Can you? Oh see this? shit! Oh my god! Gun locked out. <laughs> God damn! Stop. All right. All right. Sorry. 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 sorry, 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 sorry. sorry Nate. No, but my <laughs> my agent's um husband is, was a a speechwriter for like one president or something back in the eighties. For who? For who, man? Filmo. Well, just I mean, you, well, there were only Miller? a couple of presidents. Exactly. In guess you Reagan. Know, you, Reagan. You, Nixon. Reagan. Nixon. Bush. I don't. Two, I don't want to dox one? this person. Uh, but, no. You no. Know. Truman. Wait. With the eighties. The eighties. Yeah. So we got we got Jimmy Carter. You can't dox a president, can you? <laughs> no, the Ronald Reagan. They live in the George White House. Bush Senior. It was a wait. Was it 
We don't, I want to. I don't look it up. There's no was way it to know. Jimmy Carter, Gerald Ford, Carter. Nobody knows what the Carter, Reagan. Nobody Hoover, knows. Hoover. Oh man, I guess nobody knows. And y'all didn't sign up for this podcast to listen to that. It kind of threw me off when you told me this, Eric. But can you please let the people know what type of information you just heard regarding um, our one of our favorite topics to talk about and one of the favorite topics for everybody in the world right now to talk about, which is aliens. So, Eric, yes. can you please take it away with this earth-shattering, well, life-changing I'll start knowledge? It, I'll start it off with this. I'm no expert. I don't know if this is all to be true. I'm not a scientist, but what I hear, I'm beginning. It's so weird. There's so many, there's agents of chaos when it comes to the disclosure of information about aliens. You have the guess it's, we're in a weird point in time where when you, when the government says there are aliens, you don't want to believe them. And when the conspiracy mm -hmm. theorists say there aren't aliens, you want to believe them. You see what I mean? Right. Well, it's interesting because it seems like when the government says there's an alien, that means that they are hiding a governmental right. invasion. But when there is a government, but when there's a, we hear about the invasion, it means they're hiding aliens. So at a certain point, are they hiding something even worse than both of those things? Here's the it, thing. Could there be even be something like that? My thoughts on the nature of man is that man mm. cannot hold in a secret like this throughout many administrations. Uh, Unless there's unless I'm getting something wrong about people's sense of duty to their country and secrecy. But if we're saying that Roswell <laughs> happened in the nineteen forties and oh they're they're doing secret projects on aliens underground in bunkers, I, I'm starting to think can 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 you really keep that secret for almost you I know think eighty you years? Do you want to know how you can? How? Here's how you can keep that secret. How? How? <laughs> Oh, like, through death and violence. By people. Oh, as soon as somebody knows, you slip them some pill that makes right. their mind go crazy. This is what I've been saying about the moon landing. Because yeah, we don't I hate know to if say that it, happened. I don't know if that happened. Right. Because you're telling me that when did that happen? 1969? Correct. Right. Jack, you, you have fully convinced me of this, the, that the moon. Was, I was like, damn, because you're, 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 you're like, we haven't gone back to the moon. Why haven't we gone back to the moon since We the, haven't been back since 1969. You're telling me that. That man went on the moon, and since then, I can now go to the grocery store and get gochujang sauce like this if I want. We've moved so far technologically in so many ways as a globe. You're telling me not only us, but nobody has been back to the moon. It just makes me want to well, go up to somebody's door, knock on it, counter open that, it man. up, and say, Cap, what? Let me counter that just moment. I wish you would because I don't get countered normally because yeah, people are I, so afraid I, of me. I, speaking on human nature and how we got to the moon, I believe we have the science to achieve this, and I believe that we did go to the moon, okay? I don't, the, the Why? The idea of whether or not we were able to stream back the – the footage to TV live from the moon. Did that even, was it live or it was, a, it, was it was live, live, right? It was live. How the fuck did it they was, do that? Live, That's the part live. that gets you is okay. how they do TV. <laughs> a little bit, but here's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, it makes me sad because guess what? It's not like our country was so curious about what's on the moon and let's go study the rocks and see what's right, happening right, right. as our caves and mountains. No, we don't give a fuck about that. All we cared about was the cold war and getting ahead of, um, the Soviets, the Russia, Fuck getting and ahead. asserting our dominance, and that to me is. Do you all ever think about that? That's pathetic. So it yeah. makes me think like all these advancements that we have come to know as comforts started off as uh, may, uh, may, like through may, pettiness. Right. Do you know what I mean? Well, this is what they it's, why they say why they say that um, competition is ultimately, this is the, what they say, that competition is ultimately going to stop anything from ever being as good as it could possibly be. Because at a certain point, the most popular or the best business savviest idea is going to have to win. There's going to be a certain upper echelon of amazing products, but at the end of the day, there's going to be a, a certain focus that needs to be happening on winning. That's always going to be there inherently. That's going to take energy away from doing the best job in such a sense as a, at the project. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm. Are you sure? Um, I, I think it does. Uh, I'll have to think on that one, but I think I agree with you fully. Well, that Nate? makes perfect sense. You think we didn't go to the moon, everybody, now? I don't know. I just don't know. If, I don't know. Here's the thing. I think people need to get more comfortable with saying this. these three words. I don't, don't fucking know, know that. that. But, but really quick about aliens. Yeah, I did see a crazy-ass video. Showed a 
spaceship it was on Tom leading scientist Tom DeLong. <laughs> Tom DeLong <laughs> <Listen issue>. Yeah. <laughs> nah, you know, people laugh at him, but he did advance a lot of the disclosure that's happened to Congress. And so when you laugh, you might want to clap instead because you're going to be thanking him in a few years when disclosure really happens. Laughter is clapping but with your throat. He posted a video that was shot in Texas of a – it could have been CGI. We don't know. It's JFK just, was shot know. in Texas. A lot of people are shot in Texas. Uh, Alamo. But th- listen, they had a show to spaceship taking off very fast. Uh, okay. Up, a shadow kind of air. moving really fast. Looked like the Tic Tacs, almost a bigger version of the Tic Tac. We have Tic Tacs. Ships. Guess what? Guess what that ship looked very similar to, Nate? What? What's that? That thing from Toy Story with the eyes squeeze out. Mm, not quite. It looked very similar to... Um, I'm sorry, this non-alcoholic soda I'm drinking is so good, but it's making me... Buzzed a little bit. No, I, it makes my, me feel indigestive. But no, it looked very similar to Hold a painting a of a... Uh, there's a famous painting from the 1500s called the Nuremberg Incident, and it seems to depict over the city of Nuremberg in 1561... Where's that? A spa- that's Germany. Uh, mm. sit, a spaceship sitting above the city and some chaos ensuing from the spaceship. Oh, okay? my. And by the way, there are reports to cor- corroborate the um, painting. Co- journal entries. Cooperatively robberating. So wait, so what so is wait, the, very interesting that there's that? a spaceship from the 1500s that looks very sp- similar to a spaceship that is showing in okay, Texas so, on video whoa. present day. So you're saying there was a painting of a, an old ass time ago, and then there was a footage caught recently, and the two alien spaceships look most similar. Hold up, they look I, got, I got a little bit of an issue with that. So this is the same make and model of spaceship? Like, they haven't they haven't progressed mm-hmm. at all? Like, they're not... Oh, this is my question it. too, Nate. Every year, us as humans, we're coming out with the 2021 Toyota Prius. We're coming out with the 2022 Toyota Prius SE. That's we're because with, we're not we're making, making it with... So they just have, do ever, like... Do you, do you I, know about the word bespoke nate that means quality and people refer to that with i i have bespoke hats and pants and coats and these bespoke items that were handcrafted and made with love and care they last they're supposed to last last your whole lifetime maybe the aliens make bespoke alien ships you know what i mean (laughs) that's this custom made it's crafted with care it lasts for a lifetime we don't know i'm not kidding you i cannot remember the last week that i did not learn a word in English. Pretty much every <laughs> awesome. fucking week, I am learning a word That's in English. Good. No, That's it's not awesome because it means I'm catching up. We got to keep you le- reading. What did man. I just learn? Reading, reading, Bespoke? Reading. Bespoke. And Nate, did you know that? Of course I know that. I knew. Of, Fuck of off. You're lying. <laughs> you're lying. lying. I, I did. I, that is, I am 100% right. lying. I didn't Nate, let me word. ask if you Sorry. know this word. And Eric, you probably know it too because you're a nerd. The, the word is parody. And I'm not talking about ha ha ha. P A R I T Y. Parody, parody. means. <laughs> Let Nate try. Eric, Nate, do you know that? No, no. I know like parody, parody. comedy parody very lo- well. No, parody. P A R I T Y. P-A-R-I-T-Y. You don't know that one, Nate? Parody, no. Let's go. I feel like, Nate, you and I have a. I, I feel like most people <laughs> know what parody means. All right. Right? Glasses. Nerd. No, no, no but, I don't. But if you went to liberal one. arts like me, yeah, what does it mean? No, pay, pay. Par- like people remember. would say, like we need to establish knowledge parity on our team. That would mean that, mean? like, if there's a new member on the team and the rest of the team knows some shit about some subject, boink, then <laughs> <laughs> establishing parity means bringing everybody up to the same level, pe- bringing people to a level of Equalness. sameness. Really? So how would you use it if you were just being normal? Yeah. Like, hey, man, what are you going to get for, or like, what's up? You want to give some lunch? I don't think people use it in day-to-day conversation unless it's like, I need to establish pay parity with you. Hmm. Nate, are you learning I want to establish this? pay parity I was an English with major. Jay-Z. Did you know that? You were a fucking English major? Yeah. Dang, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. What was your favorite book in college, Nate? I would do like the spark notes for every single class that I was in, like didn't pay attention, went to like probably, you know, 15% of the classes that I had to go to just showed up for the exams pretty much like 15% just, just scooted my way through college and I got you know pretty what? good grades too. Scooted. I'm ashamed to say Nate as I was the exact same fucking way, but here's well, the thing. Yeah. Are we, were we, 
smart for doing that or were we idiots well look at people like steve jobs look at people like elon musk yeah. the smartest people tend to not be the hardest workers because what you're doing is you are reclaiming your labor you're reclaiming your relationship with people who are trying to right. control your time control your mind and control the way that you are feeling that day in a sense you guys know that elon musk tweeted about a month ago that he liked stepbrothers and that he was re-watching it that's yeah, awesome see, sometimes you got to give the man credit where it's right. to do let me say something that this is basically like a rare thing. I don't even know how to describe this. It's a new type of rare thing. Do you guys know what the Stepbrothers commentary is? DVD commentary? No. No. It wait, wait, wait. Musical, I think I do. It is a musical improv commentary <laughs> where they're singing about the production of the film <laughs> with like Will Ferrell, whatever his name, Adam McKay and John C. Riley, And they're sing, making up songs about how they feel like they look so fat and, and ugly in the scenes. <laughs> and they're singing songs about how much the prosthetic nuts co cost. And then Gilbert Arenas shows up on the, at one point in, no, on the phone. That? I think it's a basketball player. Um, and the only reason I know him is from the Step Brothers commentary. But that's a rare type of thing now because it's like... How can you even get that? You need to find the DVD, then you need to rip it under the off of the DVD, and that's it. But I guess that's how. Well, Nate, you were saying this. Uh, you were shouting this from the rooftops when you got all fucked up in New York. But you were saying physical media is coming back. Streaming oh. is dying, and physical media is coming well, back. Right, podcasts are going to come out on cassettes. Yeah, Watch this is just. I mean, a lot of people. You are listening to things on Spotify, your YouTube. Everything is in the cloud. Everything is online right now, and I have this weird feeling that we want to get back to physical type of media, and I think mm -hmm. people are desperate mm -hmm. for it and they want it badly. And you know why? Why is that? Why? Because we have more senses than just sight and uh, sound, hearing. Yeah. And when you get a VHS, when you get a CD, you smell the CD, you smell the VHS, you feel the touch. And those things really, scent memory, touch flavor right. memory, you those things all really stick to. with you. You, you can, can suck, suck on it. On. Nate, you like to suck on just what's about the everything. What's craziest you ever, thing you've ever put in your mouth? Nate, you what's the craziest down suck? a DVD? <laughs> that's dangerous that's dangerous Wait, Don't remember do that. remember them on the patreon we did we went through tmz's member them uh article so which you're is saying awesome. member dvds but member no member this um <laughs> this is a new yeah. segment what? Nay, we this? wish you were here man because we're kind of we're it's really kinda, hot in it's, here. it's hot in here i can no, but me, me, remember the disney vhs is all puff puffed out no you, you no. don't remember that? What do you mean, like a puffier no. VHS? How did how did it, it fit like in the, the slot? Case, no, no, the VHS itself was not normal, but the case was like a puffy, like oh, like a bumpy. It was like bumpy plastic. and like squishy and like air. It, it like, was like thick. Just a regular sleep. Yeah, it was thick. It was Eric thick got those Maldo no. Eric got Man, those Moldovan uh, DVD VHS tapes sent to him from his uh, long lost relatives and whatnot. No, I didn't. But I'll tell you something <laughs> pathetic. When I was a kid, I got shipped the the Disneyland VHS that showed you how awesome Disneyland was. No. no. Did you ever get that? <clears throat> no. no. I wish I, I did. They would send this to children. I think I signed up for it on the internet. For Disney Children Mail? But they sent out sent out the, the VHS that just makes Disneyland look like the sickest place on the planet. It does. And I remember begging to go. And, I, yeah, we went. Disney World is the scariest place on the planet. Don't go. If you're listening and you're on your way to Orlando Studios, go into the cockpit and don't do anything bad, but just tell them you don't want don't want anyone going to Disney World. Because the people in those, let's just say I, ha I know a lot of people who work inside of those mascots costumes that you think are so nice and friendly, but the people who are inside of those mascot costumes, no. they're not so friendly. I and if you go up wrong. there, I think they luck their lives. You don't know that because I <laughs> talked to them on the Discord. I am in the mascots only Discord. I hacked in. <laughs> And I literally, because I used to be a mall Santa, and what happened is I am listening to a violent uprise. The people, let's just say the person who plays Goofy is going to explode in no, three days. No. And you need to not be around him when it happens. I don't know where you're getting this information, Jack. Because, Nate, did you know people who went to Disney College? Disney College? What is that? <laughs> this University is of Disney. Made up. I, I, I'm sorry if this term is a sensitive term, but this is basically, to me, indentured servitude, where people, <laughs> people <laughs> sign up to go to Disney College, 
and basically they stay in some expensive dorms. They have to pay to be. I feel like they have to pay to be there, and they learn how to do all the different do- jobs at Disney. And then afterwards, they might get a job as like a cashier. Wow, man, that they sounds might, like the play. They of, might get a job. Of, uh, it's not guaranteed. In America. Huh? What? <laughs> it's not I don't, guaranteed. I don't think it's guaranteed. And you know, my estranged aunt uh, by marriage works uh, still as a cashier at Disneyland. Yeah. She is a cashier? Yeah. Where? At some gift store. I don't want to dox, but, but I pray for her business because I know. Yeah. Well, COVID didn't really rock Disney World the same no, way. No, no. People were risking life and limb to get there. <laughs> you too. Nate was at the front door salivating. Oh. Pounding out the fucking gates. <laughs> Looking for some beignets. Uh, and Cal- you, no, Nate is a California adventure fucking freak. You've been <laughs> a California adventure how many times now? Yeah, Nate? you like the nice I, weather I can't in even California, count. you freak. I can't even count at this point. I'm, I stay there. I, uh, I think a record just got set of a guy that was at Disneyland for like 400 and something days in a row. That's it? 600. I don't know. A lot of days. All right. That's awesome, man. Congrats I kind of that love that the world is kind of wisening up to people that love because I feel like 20 years ago, it was like a fringe opinion to think that people like who like Disney were kind of like cringe. And, and cringe didn't even exist back then, which I think a lot of people might even want to go back to those times where there was no, no, no such ending. thing as cringe. Cringe is ending. Yeah. We are right, in a post-cringe over. reality right now, okay? but Well, what, yeah. What you come to realize is that the people that you call cringe are the people that are just not in your bubble. And what, right. what, what what the beauty that the cringe movement has brought us is that we've realized, do you know a what a bubble movement. looks like? Well, you know what a bubble looks like from out the outside? Yeah. It looks like a distorted reflection of the rest of existence. Oh, my goodness. Can you hand me the Tic Tacs really quick? As you need to freshen up your breath because that sense. Damn, so Eric, your yeah. breath fucking stinks. <laughs> <laughs> my I'm breath not- has never stunk. My, the, I t- the dentist was like, damn. Tap in now to the Patreon. We're doing crazy ass shit there. We're doing things that are not legal People to fucking do. Love, love the, the Patreon. Regular. Literally the the community we're building is so large. It's like, what is this a country? It's so big. What is this an inflating? Right. Um, one of those things you put water on and it starts inflating in the tub. One of those dinosaurs. Oh, those are those are. Dark what do you think happens magic? if you eat one of those? Those it gets are in fun. your stomach acid and mm. then blows the fuck up. Remember, did you ever hear that if you ate a watermelon seed? Of course. It's game over. What if you snort a watermelon seed? Does your brain start growing a watermelon? Ugh. It wouldn't even work. All right, Nate. What's the next topic we got here, man? Not that well, we need one. Well, okay. Not so that we need one. We could go free, freestyle. This is a we, juicy. This is time. really juicy right here because... Ooh. Um, so I want to hit you guys with this fact right now that might shock you. All right, 75% of people believe that sentient AI deserve to be treated with respect let me say that again real quick just so you can look because you're probably thinking what the fuck 75 percent of people believe that? yes 75 percent of people believe that sentient ai deserve to be treated with respect so hmm. i'm imagining you two have some kind of opinion on this subject we've talked about ai really? before how can you not uh, right now i feel like it's kind of the thing. hot button topic we definitely have opinions but nate i want to know what you think about this because you were telling me, well, Nate was fucked up most of the time he was in New York, but one night. I think all the he, whole entire time. From yeah, yeah, you were all dawn. fucked up, dark brown <laughs> liquor on your breath. You kind of <laughs> snuck in my bedroom and whispered to me, get up, get up, I got to tell you something. And you basically <laughs> were in a drunken stupor and tell me all about how much you can't wait for AI robots to come alive so you can beat the shit out of them. But the, hey, the, this is. Because this you've is always a, wanted to beat, beat someone, but you don't want to be violent to a human being. I want to I want there to be an AI sort of revolution, okay? But here's where I differ with the with seventy five percent of people. I want there to be I want most of the things I see in the world to be sentient AI t- type of humanoid objects. But here's where really? I differ. I th- don't think they deserve to be treated with respect. In fact, <laughs> I believe the opposite of that. And I want to be going in the grocery yeah. store, just fucking bodying, taking a fucking pal- face palm in an AI humanoid by the fucking head and bang, die, 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 <laughs> fucking fucking it, uh, his head up right on the fucking countertop, fucking yeah. their ass up. Just everywhere I go, I'm just shoving these into fucking traffic. They're getting fucking exploded. And I pay like kind of a monthly fee so where it's cool and I can do that. Like You're this. on the platinum plan. I'm on the platinum. You're on the AI platinum plan, uh, like s- serial up. murder, mass mass murder. <laughs> oh my god! All right, let's let's role play. I'm a I'm a um, 
whatever humanoid but not too humanoid it's pretty robotic so it's not too traumatizing for children or anybody and i'm a cat and i'm just somebody working at the grocery store and it's not you know it's it's just uh, it sounds kind of like a ro- it sounds like bender from futurama okay right. i won't do the voice but so it comes wait, jack over is to- a jack is a cashier you're a humanoid yeah and i'm your server jack uh, yeah, i don't know how jack fits well into i'm this. just there, i'm there i'm the real human to you know all right just, just check out the groceries i guess you may not need that but well no we'll we'll fit it in okay and i come over uh to you you would ask for a half and half for your uh coffee and i mm. brought you skim fucking nasty ass watery milk whoopsie they they make mistakes too hello sir i'm sorry about that uh they only had skim milk I'll bring it to you on a tray. You're with your daughters. Three daughters. <laughs> oh, damn. I'm with my family? They got us yeah. in. This no wife, though, up. man. I don't no want them wife. to see this. I would say, I would say, hey, sweethearts, all of them to my daughters, can you guys get up real quick? And daddy's got to take care of something. And they would say, are you going to fuck up this? Are you going to fucking do this, the shit that you do to the AI? And I'm be like, just get out of the restaurant right now. You don't want to see this. What I'm, all right. And restaurant. then I'm looking at you like this. Was everything to your satisfaction, sir? And I, I say, shut you. the fuck up. Shut. Don't talk. Don't look at me. Don't talk. Stop. Whatever the fuck. And, you're and doing then no, no. Then I look. Then the. Then the. Guy, then I look down. Sorry. sorry. I get, you can tell I'm a little scared because they feel fear. So sorry. Sorry about that. I will return to my my <laughs> you, pod and I will not bother you any longer. Well, they. Well, you would know who I was exactly. Like you. You would do like kind of the face scan. Like. Sorry about that, Doctor Barone. Okay, wait a minute. Craziest plastic surgeon in fucking Burbank. Okay, I'm gonna. Be... <laughs> okay, I'm a different guy. I'm a different guy. I'm not gonna. Be wait, no, I want to know what he's. I know, but I got one more thing. Oh, okay, okay, go, okay, I'm okay, coming okay, in. Okay, I'm okay, okay, okay. We're adding to the rich. Okay, I'm adding. Uh, okay, so then this little ass, like two foot tall, kind of five year old, uh, comes in. To the daddy, why are you screaming? Why are you screaming at this? Is everything okay? It's bringing. To the AI, thing. the AI has a child. The AI has a oh, five-year-old oh, it's okay, child. It's, it's okay, Bob. Yo, Bob, you hell. Go back. To, Bob, you hell. Some and you see me, uh, and I'm smiling go, 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 harder. Go than back I have. to the car. I'll be with you in a moment. I don't, don't want to go. Is it. something wrong going to happen to no, you, no, father? No, no, no. Just go, go over there, stand Dad, with manager. Please. No, no. It's okay. Please, please. Get the fuck back to the. And I get a little uh, angry now. You see some human emotion. Get it. And then I, I, th- I get you out of the way because I feel some rage coming at me from Nate. So, sorry about that, sir. I promise it will not. What happened again to Nate? And I'm smi- I'm smiling so fucking big. The hardest you could smile. I'm saying, oh, this is you got good. his child shows here. gold, all gold molars. And I said, get out, get out <laughs> of the fucking restaurant right now to my fucking daughters. Get out of the fucking goddamn restaurant right now. I, daddy's got to take care of some shit. They they know that I'm not playing around right now. They fucking scoot out of there. Yeah. And I go yeah. up to the child and I say, huh, is that your? Hello there, little little guy. Please, is that your he's, daddy he's over brand there? new. No, please. No, shut up. Shut your he's fucking mouth. To be, yeah, shut up. Be an artist. Yeah, that is my dad. <laughs> he I, gave birth you, to me. I really? pull you up by the head, oh. and I and I take you up to my level, kind of. So sir, I I love. Sir, that you. hurts. And I take you, and I fucking wind up, fucking Pedro Martinez <laughs> pitcher style, throw your ass <laughs> as hard as I fucking can into the glass window. We are also on the fucking top floor at the Hancock, at the Chicago uh, Hancock. Oh, movie. gee. You're getting you are- groceries at the top. This is a grocery store at the top floor. Of the- <laughs> oh, I'm giving them coffee. Oh, What's we're that? at the restaurant. restaurant. Well, we're it's a-, a grocery kind of coffee deli oh, mixture. Oh, my bad. But it's at the top Gourmet floor. It's at the 96th this floor the of the future, Hancock. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot, a lot of shit oh, my bad, my bad. in the future. All right, all right. And they do have grocery stores high up in the Hancock, okay. by the way. All right. And as soon as I throw this fucking your child out, I just am looking at Eric the entire time, the humanoid. And I'm just looking at, and, and you, what are you doing? You're, you're, and then what happens? Eric cries a single tear, and I, and I stop, and I'm like, what? The, these, they have emotions. I've never seen this new yeah. model where they can cry and they have right. consciousness. And, and then what do you do? You throw yourself off the build? Uh, what do you? <laughs> yeah. And then I jump out. <laughs> jump oh out shit. Myself. <laughs> oh shit okay but then that's kind of clean neat it's just as a nice story your yeah. dad your daughters whatever they have to raise themselves because their mom's gone yeah yeah well there's an alternate there's a part of this ending because you think that's the end of the movie right right but then all of a sudden you see the three daughters and they're standing at the edge of the window and they're crying daddy daddy no he's gone all the way down to the bottom and smack it and then they kind of turn around and who's behind them getting up the child the child 
Uh, and now the four of them have to kind of either raise each other or fight each other to the death or, oh, you know, my. now it's kind of a kid movie. God. Mm. So I mean, why that, that we are so I'm like, I'm like, hey, this would be fun. Let's make up a little scenario, be a little funny and have some fun with it. We write a fucking movie in two minutes, and I'm like, it's better that than anything that like how Marvel, effortless Star that Wars. Was. And by the way, speaking of movies that fucking suck that are coming out, yo, Star Wars, chill right now. You've done enough damage. You need to let this shit sit for another ten years, and then maybe you can make some one more. You were saying that, right, Nate? Well, okay. So what what we have here is there's a director called Taika Waititi, and he has directed the Thor movies. He was in Jojo Rabbit. He made uh, What We Do in the Nazi Shadows. Movie. What we he do in the Shadows. Using, he What's is that? using. He's New Zealander, and he's using his fucking power as leverage, which a lot of people do in Hollywood. They like this little term leverage. He's using that to star and direct, I think, and direct in a, a star, his own Star Wars movie. Right. And we're gonna, what we're the saying hell? enough, Taika Waititi, enough. And, I'm not, and we're not calling him out. We're not doing anything uh, of, this, of the sort because uh, we do the same thing in his position. But I'm saying, right. why don't we give this Star Wars franchise to a fucking someone... Um, um, an actor you haven't seen in a long ass time that can reinvigorate it. Give it to fucking um, who's that guy I'll from Rat Race with the piercing in his tongue? I'll tell you who. Who we need to give it back. Disney needs to give it back to Mr. George Lucas. And guess what? George Please. Lucas needs to, back to the guy. George, and he live forever. He needs to star cell. in the movie as George Lucas. He needs to get into acting. Oh my god! You see his kind of old as life. George Lucas. Yeah, George Lucas he's is now basically a God. Jedi. And he you think about it. What, oh, oh, imagine because he's already six foot, I think. And then Princess imagine. Leia's going, going. Oh my God, who are you? My name is George Lucas. Where are you from? I don't know, San Francisco or something. Oh, what did that mean? And he goes, I created you. Oh, and they go, What see, do you mean? What? Yo, this is like Charlie Carrie Kaufman Fisher style. Away. Well, she's well, but this is beyond Charles Kaufman because this is like. First of all, this has to be like cast oh, by like people who being John Malkovich ish ish. Yeah, all right, that's sick. And George is walking around, and he has like unlimited powers in this world. He has like Thanos type, but like next level. Like, I you don't think? And he takes out his <laughs> fucking typewriter. Ah, oh, that what Jabberwocky's coming at right at me. Type up the mm-hmm. scene. Then the Wookie explodes into a million flames. Boink. Somebody else comes at him with a lightsaber. Lightsabers actually don't work on me. Ting. Mm-hmm. So you're That's telling like me Carol, looking, mm-hmm. you're saying his Chop weapon. Zone. A lot of the people in Star Wars, their weapon is um, lightsabers, evilness. Lasers, is large the force, foot is right. uh, yeah. uh, lightsabers. But George Lucas's weapon is his imagination. Mm. Mm. That's right. That is pretty much what I'm saying. And, but yeah. But he has to be able to type fast enough so the whole first act of the movie, or maybe the second act of the movie, is him taking typing classes to try and get up to like 160 words per minute. So that, I'm, already, I'm already there, by the way. Well, maybe you should write, be a consultant on the film. Well, I would love to, but no one seems to want to get me a shot in the fucking business. Right? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Why does everybody fucking hate this shit out of Eric? Yeah, man. This is I'm like, like we'll give you yo, it's poison. You're like, I'm like pitching shit for every franchise, for every character <laughs> from all the universes. I have spinoffs of all this shit, and yet people are fucking telling me to stop calling, put the phone down, stop texting. I'm like, you want, and I know they're asking because I say you can use this shit for free. You can use any idea. Imagine that. I sent you for free, no problem. The cost of well, a film is so fucking crazy these days, and the idea million, that you're over a million dollars to, waste, to make collect, some of these movies sit and collect and dust. Like, God damn. You're going to die the next person that says, this man. The next person that says this, a filmmaker that says, and I saw a fucking uh, uh, Spielberg said this recently. This is a pet peeve of mine. On a panel, we love panels. We love fuck panels. Pet we love the fuck out anything of panels. On planet. And I love when yeah. creatives get into a panel type scenario and they're mm-hmm. kind of taking questions from regular ass people. And they're letting us in on their process, and we love I that. I love shit. that. So this is this oh, is oh yeah, that's this valuable. is a pro panel yeah, time. podcast, and we've pro been panel. that from the beginning. But what I will say is that filmmakers do this weird thing where they will be in the panel scenario at the D- Directors Guild uh, uh, Association uh, uh, Awards or whatever. They're in a panel, 
and they say, these filmmakers today, they have it so easy, you could shoot a fucking movie on your phone. Uh, da, da, references Tangerine. Shut the fuck up. The next filmmaker yeah. that says you can make Quiet a movie down. on your phone, Mm-mm. you are fucking dead on sight. And if you Yeah, I'll make a I'm movie on my panel. phone. It's called first person point of view. I fucking run full speed into somebody who's gonna get it in <laughs> right, the fucking face. Right. Oh no. And it's a it, feature film where I'm fucking punching somebody who I don't respect for ninety right. two minutes. Well what I'm tired of is a slap in the face it's a slap in the face to go, You all are losers, you're too lazy. You we all have a mate a mate we didn't have cameras <laughs> as good as the one in your pocket right now, it's thirty years ago. Shut it now. Because uh, and these are by the way, I mean, you don't want me to go on off on Nepo babies, do you? Well, oh, they go on themselves, save it. but sure, let me say that sure, for the Patreon, because, we're all name names. Yeah. More oh, than the, the Vulture Patreon, article, gonna whatever. Yeah, I'm there's gonna people c- that people don't know. Let's just say we know some people that last names is, um, who's the guy from the Matrix? Keanu Reeves. Uh, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. Let's just say we know a couple of Reeveses that haven't come out yet as Reeveses. But, right. um, yeah, we don't need to go in so hard on Hollywood. It, people might say it's unwise of us to go in right. savagery style on um, Hollywood because oh. don't. Drink where you eat. Keep it respectful. Was, uh, so I'm not- oh, so, you know, we need to turn this energy around right now. Let's do it. Put some positivity into the world and do a couple of thank calls. Thank you for calling Total Water Bellevue. How can I direct your call? Hi, I don't know who to direct this to. I just wanted to say I was in your store last week, and I've been looking for a bottle of scotch for a long time, and y'all had it, and you were so helpful in helping me find it. And I was finally able to give it to my dad. He's been looking for it for years. And I just wanted to pass that on to you guys and say thanks for helping me. I love coming into your shop. It always feels so welcoming. So thank you. Oh, that's so nice to hear. I'm glad that happened. Of course. Yeah, and just if you could pass that along to the team, that would be amazing. Really appreciate you guys. Totally can do that. Alrighty. Thank you. Thanks. Now, how did well done. How did that one sound, guys? That was pro. Good. That was pro. That Eric, was kind of really easy. good at doing it straight up. You know, like just being sincere. Uh, yeah, and, but yeah. Well, I really felt like because I wanted to say before this that when we did it with Sarah, it really went off the rails into the prank <laughs> territory. And how can you not waste when time it, or prank? Well, when whatever. a comedian is about. Like right. that with such legacy style of participatory right. or whatever, whatever, big words. It's tempting. But now I feel like Clean. we're redeeming ourselves. Clean. Here, should I hit? Oh, here, hit it, hit it. Yeah, hit yeah, it, hit, hit one. Thank you for calling Let's Talk at Icebox. This is Christian speaking. Hi, I just am calling to say thank you because I, I purchased a love sack that was the perfect addition to my home. And it's been uh, so uh, incredibly enjoyable. And I just had to call and give my gratitude. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. You're totally welcome. Um, we're here to help all of our customers. And I'm glad you like the experience of coming in and purchasing your couch through us. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate you saying that. Um, so have, have a wonderful day. Thank you. You as well. Have a good one. Can I, that was flawless. Can I just say what I'm feeling with these last two calls and this is starting to get, maybe, maybe people will find this unethical of a, but I'm almost wishing they were a little bit more like, what kind of love side did you buy? Like if I was impl- not to critique them, but if they were so, like, well, who helped? Maybe they're busy and they got to get on with their day. Respect. Right. What, so but I'm like, well, I want to know who helped me. What's interesting is, um, <laughs> you know, we do these thank calls hoping that we have a spin on prank calling somebody that, mm-hmm. Sure. Is it a prank? Technically, maybe. But in another sense, we are really trying to make these people feel good. Right. And so it feels weird when I can tell that even though I was well-intentioned, I did feel like that person didn't give a fuck about that. It's kind of like sometimes when somebody tells you good job, you didn't need to hear that. It's like, I didn't need you to tell me good job. I know that I sold you a love sack and it went perfectly. And I know you're enjoying my product. And you you know what my observation is? On these two calls, we've called some smaller businesses before. These were two major, Love Sack and Total Wine and More. Right. These are major corporations. These people don't have attachment to the project. To the job or the yeah. store. They don't give a fuck. So, so, and, and actually good on them for not caring because that's how the worker should be. That is true. Worst so so maybe the next time we should call a... Power to the workers. We should call the smallest business we could find. Well, that's when I get worried too because it's so this that is, harassment. So maybe this is the last thing call. We, oh, you know what? Why don't we do it to our friends? Hey, yo. 
Because yeah. if we call a celebrity, oh yeah, you and we say, would be would like to hear "Yo, that Zach too. Braff, thank you for all those episodes, thank you for all the scrubs that I thank watched you for all those behaviors." Press in high school. Yeah. All right, Nate. Wait, you got one on deck? Still, still. This is Nick speaking. Hi, Nick. Um, this is Nate. I was just giving you guys a call just because I had a a French dip at your restaurant recently, and I just wanted to say like it was so good. Like, it was just so fucking good, and I thought, I'm just going to call you guys and just let you know, like, that this was one of the best sandwiches I've ever had, and just let y'all, oh, you that know. that is so nice of you to say it. Thank you. We appreciate that. Of course. I was just like, you know, not not enough people get to hear that, like, you know, uh, you know, on, on the phone, and I was just like, let's just... It was a great, it was one of the best French dips ever. Like, I'm just, I'm not even joking. Like, I was so, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to come back again and again and again and again and eat that French dip over and over because I just loved it so Well, much. thank you. That's so nice, and I will, I will definitely let the management know. Yeah, let the, let the, sh- let the chef know, too, because that, I mean, I will, yes. that would yes, be amazing. All right, well, thank you well, so thank much. You. We, we appreciate that. Of course, all right, and I'm you have a blessed like rest of your week. You as well, thank you. All right, thank you, thank bye-bye. You, for All some right. reason, Nate, that made me hot and made me want to run into the other room. <laughs> well, what's interesting what is you heard what, what their response what? was. Yeah, you heard what their response uh, was, what? right? <laughs> they said, oh, that's so great. I'm going to tell management. Yeah. Yes. So, Wait, what do you mean by that? I mean, hey, Nate, by the way, great job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bottom line, but I did feel some uh, human emotion. There is some... Like, yeah. I, I, I I was a little facetious, I would say, as I was saying it, but you know they can't really. You read said that. you dropped the f word within about twelve seconds. That's fine. Mm-hmm. That's that's, a, that's so okay. Fucking good. Some people when you when you say fuck to some people, that makes you more human. When you say fuck to other people, that makes, makes you more, you more of a devil. demon, de- devil, whatever. Devilish. That guy obviously did not like the f word. All right, so maybe next time we'll come back at the thank calls with a different spin on it. We will. We're this not is giving the last up time you segment. saw him like this. This isn't just gonna be a phone it in uh, no. segment. Uh, We're always tuning. Funny. Yeah, What's that? we're gonna be tuning it up. Um, tuning out. So check it out in a couple months when it's we're kind of gonna come back with that. So should we we're, say what we're joyful for and get out of here and get the fuck out of here? But, but we're having an amazing time being here. We could stay yeah. here for hours, for and, hours, hours and hours. But we know that y'all gotta get back to work. Time y'all to go. Y'all, it's y'all, Tuesday I only night. have so many dishes to do, and then at a certain yeah. point, the dishes are done. Hey, let us know if you're doing the dishes during this. Please, please. Um. So what we're thankful for? All right. Here, go, I'll, I'll, I'll. Oh, keep Nate, go, Nate, go, Nate, go, yeah, go. Nate. So today I finished reading a book, and wow. when you get when you get to that last page and you say and you're Ooh. done with that journey, you feel a sense of accomplishment and a sense of pride. And I got to that point where I finished this book that I was reading. It's called Cassandra at the Wedding. It's a really good book. It's about two hundred some pages. Perfect um, length. Perfect. Perfect, perfect length. It was is a great read. I recommend it. Um, and I'm on to the next one. And I immediately picked up my next book at the library. Let's go. That's the way to go is crack that next book right off the bat. Otherwise, you're not reading anymore. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm doing. Is crack that anymore. book open. Good for you, Nate. Good for you, Nate. Congrats. Oh, I'll keep it. But we might – maybe we can make this one book theme because I – what have I – I've read five books since the beginning of the year. Are you oh serious? Oh my god. Yes. This five what, books? What? Yes. What length? No Listen, way. this is a little bit facetious because I've read facetious. three uh Okay, cuz p- some people will say you didn't actually read that shit, man. It was an audiobook mm. because I'm listening to the audiobooks while I'm walking my dog in the morning. Mm. But no, yeah, three of them were Well, can you tell are, us here, tell me a fact no, about No, audiobooks books. do not count. Sorry. No, I think they count. No, well, they is do this not. An audio book? Why no. don't they count? Because you don't have to imagine what the because uh, the uh, character sounds like. They I'm, do I'm not count. The... Why not, Nate? Because you are listening. There is no. There is no sort of active brain thing going on as you're no, listening to this I would shit. Say when actually, you're reading, your brain is doing the craziest amount of calculations. Or at least, wrong, Jack, you can back me up on wrong. this, right? As somebody who has an incredibly, <laughs> incredibly horrible relationship with reading comprehension, I literally <laughs> just read my first book of my entire life, as some of you know, in the, on the podcast. And it took me a fucking long time. Man, this, but it's not funny. As I, I say this, as I say this, to meet people like me and Nate, Listening to an audiobook is so much violently easier than reading a yeah. book that it does not feel like reading. Reading should be 
painful. It should no, be. A, it it no. should be. I've always said this. Reading should feel like somebody is coming at you from the end of a hallway with a knife, and your fucking yes. shoes are tied together, and you're also you didn't get much sleep, and your jeans are wet. No. It should feel like somebody is no. grabbing you by the hair and holding your head underwater while no. they make you watch TV outside Every of the water. Every page is they... like a kick to the a fucking like flying scissor kick to the fucking nutsack. Every Listen, fucking and your nuts you are in no, your heart. Stop. And listen to me now. <laughs> I have had to reestablish my relationship with books and reading because I'll tell you why. For the longest time, I would try to read books that were cool, made me look sick. They were ex- they weren't reading for the sake of reading; they were reading for the sake of accessories Lord and of the talking flies. points. Lord of the Flies is a little different. That was a masterpiece, but <laughs> <laughs> the books that I've been reading in this last year, whatever I'd say, eight months. I'm going for just whatever looks fun. I'm going for the yeah. mysteries, the sci-fi, the short novels about time travel. See of Tranquility by M.Y. St. Mandel. Uh, I thought that was pretty okay. Uh, but wow. you know what I mean? That's why I think audiobooks, let them in, book lovers. Let them in. If you don't like the uh, reader, that's okay. Turn it off. But if, But sometimes I feel like I'm getting more information from listening because sometimes if i'm reading i skim through some stuff on accident but you gotta listen to the whole thing that's what i was hearing i was hearing recently that reading a book is actually um that is about to be made old school kind of like using a uh using a fire instead of a microwave why because it's so wildly inefficient all the different words you don't need and this and that unless you're reading it for artistical sense if you're just reading for information if you're reading philosophy if you're reading this and that it's soon to be outdated that's a shame well it is what it is that is a damn shame i all accept right. all growth Wait, what gave you joy jack we got it all right should i try and make it book themed yeah if you um, could um if you could that would be amazing um but no pressure oh god yeah. how the hell could i talk about a book uh this week i got joy you know what this week i got joy from not reading I feel like I've been trying to read. That's um, amazing too. I've been trying to, I've been spending this whole year. It took me about two months to read about 180 pages and I was doing it every single day. And to have this week where I would make it a part of my morning routine. And now my morning routine is more freed up to do things like word unscrambling. Um, That, yeah, has just made me, made me feel a little more fresh. The duality of reading. The reading, yeah. So interesting. Yeah, by the way. Talk about. By the way, we are about to drop the Joy Tactics Essential book Reading Book Club. Essential Reading Lists. List on, Sign up. I think, on the Patreon. We need to do it That'll soon. That'll be at the $100 us. level. The only people yeah. that get this is if you give us 100 <laughs> a month. If not, and if you share the list, if you're not in the, from the $100, $100 tier, you will be banned and blocked. And, and if you're I, for the read, for the, well, for the non-readers out there, I'm also going to make a list of the most interesting geography YouTube videos about how Best Mexico's rocks. population is, you know, in like a in like a belt basically across the middle of the country. 51 percent of it is, and 18 percent of the. Yeah. Can I say this real quick, Eric? You brought this up for the hundred dollar Patreon tiers. We have you know several tiers that you can tap in at five dollar, ten dollar, and we have one that's a hundred dollars. Or we, don't we have a twenty dollar right. oh, one as well? We have a twenty. Whatever, <laughs> we have a hundred dollar, and I just find it so peculiar yeah. that peculiar, peculiar, <laughs> peculiar that we do not have one single person. So you're telling me that we are not worth a hundred dollars a month? Are you fucking kidding me? Do well, you we know don't what? have that tier yet. I thought we did have a tier for a hundred dollars. No, we just had twenty. Yeah, I don't oh, think we, we have don't. 100, do we? Yeah. No, I don't think we so have that. So that's why. So that so you don't value why. yourself. You don't value yourself as a hundred dollars. <laughs> so that's why we don't have. So that's why my we don't have ass hurts uh, so. <laughs> my <laughs> ass hurts from sitting on the steel stool so fucking bad. How's your hand? Like, uh, so oh, my hand actually got used to it. It got you Ow. know like that guy who held the hand above his head for forty years that got all curled up. Well, you should try being a puppeteer if you think that's hard because that's hard. Eric, I don't think you know that. Well, you know that if you have an hour long stand up special, which you. Which you will very soon. Which might be on the way. Soon. You are going to be having to hold a microphone for, you know, Two, about that three, length, yeah. man. I mean, so it, get used to it. It won't be a problem because I've been working out. <laughs> well, we kind of <laughs> did it again, didn't we? Thanks for listening. <laughs> God bless you all. Join tactics. Well, that concludes another incredible fucking episode of Joy Tactics. 
Head over to patreon.com slash joy tactics to unlock exclusive weekly bonus episodes. And make sure to follow us on social media where we post fire TikToks and hilarious shit like that. And if you loved the shit you just listened to make sure to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening and remember, we are shaped by our thoughts, we become what we think. When the mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves.